Hey y'all and welcome to XOMO. As you can say from today's title, we are doing another pick a card reading. Today's pick a card reading, it's going to be about how people see you, how people view you, right? Things about yourself that you might not know or might not notice, but to other people, they come through clear as day. But as always, before we begin the reading, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to see more videos like these, and to also visit my website, Mo Magic, to book me personally. I am taking readings at this point in time, I'm going to book a private session with me. Um, you can find the link in my bio. My simple sessions are $20 and my complex sessions are $40. Simple are 30 minutes and the complex is an hour. Um, yeah, but without further ado, let's head all over to the pile selections. And yeah, I'll see you over there. Alrighty, welcome to your card selection. Um, this is pile number one. This has a hematite crystal on top of it. This is pile number two. This is a clear quartz tower. Pile number three, this has an adventuring pendulum. This is pile number four. This is a bracelet my dad made, but I know that it has like some tiger's eye and some wood and some other natural materials in it. But to pick your card selection, I like to advise you to, you know, get grounded, place both of your feet on the floor and take some deep breaths. One in, one out. And with each breath, I like to focus on the pile of cards that I resonate with the most. And then I focus on the crystal I resonate with the most. And then I focus on the pile that seems like it resonates with me or is a vibrational match, both between the crystal and the pile of cards. Once you have intuitively selected your card pile, I'll meet you over at your timestamps. Alrighty, I'll see you there. Okay, hello, pal one, and welcome to your pick a card reading. Again, if you chose pal one, you chose the hematite stone. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. So what is going to happen is I'm going to show you this first pile of cards and then I have the Tarot of the Divine that I'm just going to get some more additional messages from and then I'll also get you an Oracle card, right? Um, but first off, let's just see what we have. Okay. Okay, so... Yeah. Yeah, so you're the person people go to when they need help, when they need advice. Um, you have the Five of Cups, right? The Five of Cups is about grieving um, um, and going through like a hard emotional process, right? It's about like grieving the loss of something, but also the maturity that comes from the other side of that. Like usually when we deal with like heavy emotions that cause us to grieve, there's some type of transformation or like wisdom that we gain coming on the other side. Then you have the Ten of Swords in reverse. The Ten of Swords in reverse, again, this is about the end of a story, but it's about the healing and recovering process, right? Right after that, you have the Hierophant. The Hierophant is about somebody that we go to who has more experience than us or somebody who can provide us with advice or guidance or who can just tell us like the methods that are tried and true about trying to obtain, you know what I mean, what we're trying to to work on, right? Then you have the nine of pentacles in reverse. And then like, I just want to make sure I get this like message right. Because the nine of pentacles, it's about, yeah. The nine of pentacles is about slowly like processing things. The nine of pentacles upright is about like, you know, making small investments. It's about high quality you know what I mean? But the small steps that we make to get the, the, you know, the high quality goods that we want. But when this card is in reverse, it's about, it's kind of about stopping. That's what I'm hearing. Like when people need to stop their progress, when they need to stop doing things, when they need to stop the movement, they come to you to get advice, you know, when they don't have all the tools that they have to invest in the things that they want to invest in, right? So this could be the person that, 
you could be the person that people go to when it's time to like learn more about their craft. That's kind of why the Nine of Pentacles in reverse is coming up. They come to you to learn, okay, what should I be doing next? Because I don't want to make any like wrongful steps in the long term. But I'm also seeing you just as like somebody that gives good advice, right? Um, I'm just going to get you some additional messages from this and then... Yeah, I'm gonna go get your oracle card. But is there anything else that we want this person to know in regards to how people see them? Yeah, what else what else would we like this person to know? This is so clear that you are the people go to when they need advice. Be it emotional, be it transformational, or be it just like about work and their career. Um, but what else? Okay, what else do we want this person to know about how people see them? What else do we want people to know about how people see them? <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm just getting that, yeah. So you have the sun card, right? Which tells me that you actually like helping people. You actually find pleasure, you know, it, it makes you feel good. You find joy in being able to help others, right? But then you have the nine of wands in reverse. And then you have the temperance card in reverse, which is telling me that this kind of tires you out. And sometimes you, you try to act like you're not that tired and it kind of like wears on it kind of like wears on your mental. You might be like exhausted. Why does every, you're definitely one of those people who are like, why does everybody contact me when they need help? You know what I mean? But nobody ever helps me. I'm just so tired of helping everybody when I kind of need some me time, right? However, the problem is that you don't necessarily communicate that. <laughs> you don't always communicate that. You could, like, if you're dealing with people who are kind of like, you know, they may be emotionally dumping on you, you, so you do like helping people, but you be trying to act like that it don't be wearing you out. Because when you're helping people grow, when you're helping people go through their grieving process, when you're helping people go through the end of a cycle, closing chapters and whatnot, and you have a lot of people coming to you, girl, you're bound to be exhausted. You're bound to be tired. But they're kind of saying that you kind of need to... You kind of need to change your perspective around it because I'm sensing that like that when people come to you, you don't want to let them down, right? You don't want to let your friends down. You kind of don't, you don't want to lose your friends. You have the three of cups and then the eight of coins. The eight of coins is about like not doing the work. I'm kind of getting that you have a little bit of anxiety around like telling these people that you can't help them because you need to take care of yourself, right? But you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about. With the star card, they're saying just change your perspective. If you're open to changing your perspective about things, don't worry. You know what I mean? Just come and be like open and truthful and honest about like, hey, I would love to help you right now, but I kind of need to recharge my own emotional battery. I need to, I need to pay attention to my own career path. I need to pay attention to the things that are going on in my own life, right? Because you don't want to ignore those things. And you also don't want to ignore that work because that's part of the work that you need to do to mature as well, right? You need to be able to communicate, okay, girl, I can't help you right now because I have my own shit going on, right? And like the three of cups, these are your friends. These are the people that pour emotionally into you. So you're kind of afraid of letting them down, right? But you don't need to be afraid of doing that. You don't. You have the lover's card, which is just telling you to choose to be the best version of yourself. It's time to make a decision that you're going to do the thing that's not only the best for you, but it's the best thing for everybody else, right? Because you can only give to others what you give to yourself first. At the bottom of the deck, you have the, look at this, look at this. <laughs> at the bottom of the deck, you have the king of, king of swords, which again is telling me that you need to start communicating these ideas so that other people can get on board and so that you're not feeling like worn the fuck out. You don't want to feel worn out. That's not that's not what we're here to do. And don't be afraid. And don't be afraid of hurting people's feelings. Don't be afraid of letting people down, right? Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is about commuting. The Five of Swords is about communicating things to people. But sometimes the things that we communicate hurt their feelings in the process because it's the truth. You know what I mean? Or sometimes like we could be like a little too truthful, but that's not what's going on here, right? 
This is just you honoring your intuition because you already know that you should be doing these things, but you're talking to yourself in your mind. You're kind of turning your intuition off and you're saying, I really need to help this person. You know what I mean? If I don't help them, who else is going to do it? But no, the high priestess, she understands the duality that I can help other people, but I need to help myself first. Right? Can we get an oracle card for pile one, please? Can we get an oracle card for one pile? So we got two. Girl, they're literally just telling you what I was talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay, so you have Earth School. Get a pencil and paper so you can journal this if you'd like, which this is like your journaling or your meditation prompt, or that, that's gonna come at the end. Um, but first off, where is it? I have Earth School. Okay, this is the first one. This is Earth School. Okay. Life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning. Planet Earth is a great initiation for the soul and life lessons are the curriculum for which we enroll. These aren't one-time lessons, but, the, but these aren't one-time lessons, but themes we choose to circle around, deepening our experience of them as we make our way through the spiral of life. Life lessons aren't only about getting it right, they're also about getting it wrong. Remembering that Earth is a planet of polarity helps with this understanding. Each year, the study deepens more and more. If you pull this card while you're going through a difficult time, you're being prompted to remember that your soul came here to grow and to learn. To try not to look at difficult times as getting it wrong. Instead, see them as opportunities for soul growth. If you can find a way to grow and soften your heart through the highs and lows, your soul is most definitely growing, which is the whole point. Pulling this card can also mean that you're being called to embark on a new area of study or growth. This could be through structured learning, such as university, school, or a training course. If you're having difficulty in a relationship, you're being reminded that these are opportunities for soul growth. After all, Relationships are known as the number one way that we grow as souls while we're here on earth. And then the journaling or meditation question for this one is, how are you being called to grow or learn? While I was reading this, something came to my mind again about the Nine of Pentacles, um, about you like helping other people when they kind of want to take a pause with their careers. But I think this is what's coming through stronger is the fact that you, that you ignore your own needs when it comes to helping other people. And again, this is just wrapping everything else together, but that just like jumped into my mind while I was reading this, that like you ignore the things that you're investing in, you ignore the things that you need to take it, take care of, and you start ignoring or not doing the work that you need to be doing in your ability to help other folks, right? That came through really strongly, just needed to get that across. I felt like it already came through, but you know, like, I'm working with my intuition. So when it comes through, it comes through. Um, up next, you have the seven star sisters, birthing creations, tapestry of life expression. I'll let you look at that. Okay. Seven star sisters. The seven star sisters. Okay, birthing creations, tapestry of life, expression. There are new creations that want to be born, beauty that's yearning to be woven, new consciousness that's longing to be breathed into life. If you draw this card, you're being called to surrender to these creations, to usher in a new era of consciousness and do your bit in weaving the web of life. This is the card of the artist and the midwife. You're being called to ponder questions. What wants to be birthed through you? What new creations are whispering in your ear? What beauty are you being called to make? Creativity and intuition come from the same sacred place. They occur when we find ourselves flowing with the rest of life. Earth is renowned as a planet of manifestation and creativity, and yet so many of us have forgotten how to create. Somewhere along the way, we stop seeing ourselves as artists 
as creatives, as poets, yet to be human is to be creative. Creativity is a part of your true nature. Perhaps you're being called to surrender to a creative project, such as a new business or book, or perhaps you're being called to weave beauty into your home or in the way you cook. Regardless of the end result, you are being called to express yourself through creativity, to surrender to the creative projects that both scare and excite you, to find a way to weave beauty back into everyday life. For where there's creativity, spirit, and soul are present. And the world needs those qualities more now than ever. And then the meditation or journaling question for this one is, what new creations are you being called to birth? Um, just with this one, I'm just kind of getting that like you creating or you like developing a creative process is kind of going to be your like outlet for helping all these people with their traumas or like giving them advice. You know what I mean? You creating is how you're going to like emotionally and spiritually pour into yourself and also get rid of some of these other energies that aren't yours. Um, but yes, I hope that helps. Um, please like and comment. Comment if this resonated or not, or if this message was something you needed to hear. Share this video if it like resonated with you so these messages can get out to other people. And don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, this is XMO. Bye. Hello, pal number two. Welcome to your pick a card reading. So just a little bit about how this reading is going to work. I'm gonna take a look at your cards. I'm gonna deliver the message that I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull some more cards from the, the Tarot of the Divine to get you some additional messages or some additional advice for you. Um, and then I'm going to pull an oracle card as well, just to send you on your way with a nice bowl wrapped around everything. But yes, this, if you chose pal number two, you chose the clear quartz tower. Um, and let's see what you got going on. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, pal number two. So, so you have the Six of Swords in reverse. You have the Knight of Cups in reverse. You have the Eight of Cups. And then you have the World card in reverse. Right? So here's a couple. Of, there's like one or two things coming through, right? Right? The primary thing that I'm seeing first is that like people just may see you as somebody who does not, who has a hard time making difficult decisions or that like you're just somebody who has a hard time like honoring your truth or making emotional offerings. I'm sensing that you have a hard time like, I'm sensing like having emotional tough conversations, right? But like these emotional conversations that, that like you need to have, they're imperative to you evolving and growing, right? But the fact that you're not having these conversations, it's just, it's just kind of like hindering you. It's kind of hindering you from moving in the direction where you need to be, right? So people kind of see you that like, you may be blocking your own blessings. People kind of see you as somebody who may be blocking your own blessings or that your future or that the things that you really want in life are blocked by your inability to have tough conversations, to be super emotional, to be vulnerable, or to just make a tough decision that lacks security, right? Because the Six of Swords, the Six of Swords is about like moving on to a place that we don't really know what the situation is gonna turn out to, right? But we still move forward in the hopes that it's going to be better than what we already have. Right, the Eight of Cups, leaving one situation to move on with the hopes that what we're moving to is going to be better. That's something that you're not really doing or something that you have a hard time doing. Knight of Cups in reverse. Knight of Cups in reverse, chow. The Knight of Cups in reverse is about, uh, the Knight of Cups in reverse is about having, is about you having a hard time making emotional offerings, being vulnerable, asking people on a date, telling somebody that they hurt your feelings. You know what I mean? These are just all things that you have a hard time with. And because you have a hard time doing these things with, they're, they're stopping your evolution. They're stopping you moving on in the next, like, like process in your soul's journey. Um, can we get pal number two some advice or anything else that we want them to know? Just in regards to how other people are seeing them.
What else can we tell pile number two? Okay, they're ready to talk. Ooh, what else can we tell pile number two? What else do we want pile number two to know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sensing when it time when it comes time to make these like tough decisions, then they they gave you the eight of cups again. They gave you the eight of cups again. When it comes time to make these tough decisions, oh my gosh. They're just throwing the cards out at you. Mm-hmm. Oh you girl. Okay, so there's a number of things going on. Okay, and we were here, 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 here. Okay, so so quite a lot, quite a lot, quite a lot. This is <laughs> it's one of the heavier reads, yeah? Okay, so the thing that's stopping you, I'm kind of sensing that when it comes time to have this conversation or to make this decision, you may be getting flustered. Like all the information that's coming out, you may be overwhelming or all the feelings that you're feeling at once may be overwhelming and this is kind of something I have like problems with as well right like when I'm having an emotional conversation that's starting to get heightened and whatnot all the feelings that I'm thinking kind of start to overwhelm me and then like I'm feeling this I'm feeling that my thoughts are running here they're running there and it just becomes harder to communicate so I kind of tap out and say I can't do this right now right you have the three of wands in reverse and then the nine of swords in reverse which again is telling me that there these that like it's stressing you out. This is just like this is like <laughs> this is like three of wands in reverse is like it's the the combination here is too much information and you don't know what to do with the information. Cuz the three of wands is about being able to plan, right? Being able to plan to be strategic about the things that we want and then once we've conducted a plan, watching those things fall out. When it's in reverse, those things aren't happening, right? Nine of Swords in reverse, again, like we're kind of scared, we're nervous, we're worrying, and we're not communicating, and we're just carrying the weight of all that stress with us. You're kind of like, you're kind of, your advice is coming. Your advice is saying, if you can afford to make a plan, if you know that you need to have an emotional conversation, role play or journal or like, be theoretical about like all the different ways that this conversation could go or maybe just map out and write out all the things that you want to get across and bring that into the conversation no sh and have no shame about that girl some people need to do that and if that's what you need to do then do that right um but it's just about like giving yourself a leg up so when these things come about you're not overwhelmed you don't you, you like we can't have you being overwhelmed miss girl you have the king of swords and the eight of cups King of Swords, again, this is about communicating, communicating in the Eight of Cups. Um, I'm getting that the words that you use might be getting ahead of you. Because they're saying, with the King of Swords, they're saying use more language about being hopeful. About hoping for a better future, for, for about going out there and seeing something better than you already have. Because right now, a number of things, right? And I'm kind of getting that this may be something that you have to do by yourself. This may be something that you have to do by yourself, right? Or at least not with the people that are currently around you because you have the five of swords in reverse. And this is just telling me, and then you have the two of cups in reverse and the 10 of swords in reverse and the two of swords in reverse. Not that reversals are bad, but just the message is that like with the five of swords in reverse, it's just that like one or two things, right? So first thing, you could be using like negative self-talk. You could be saying things like, this is never going to work out. It's hopeless. It's useless. What's the point anymore? You know what I mean? Not knowing that your the thoughts that you have and the words that you utilize, they actually create a cloud around you, around your perception. You know what I mean? If you talk to yourself and say that things aren't going to work out, they're not going to work out. But if you even, and, and I'm not even saying be like, not to engage in like toxic positivity, not saying that everything is going to work out. You know what I mean? I think that would be helpful to get you in the opposite direction. Yeah, but like something, put yourself in the, what I call it, what I like to call it is like, um, like affirmative action. 
<laughs> equity, diversity, and inclusion, not where I'm going, but kind of the same thing, is that you're giving yourself something to do. By affirmative action, you're giving yourself something positive to do. So instead of saying, this isn't going to work out, you're saying, I'm going to find a way to make this happen, right? And just that simple switch will empower you to figure out what you need to do to make this a possibility. Up next, you have the Two of Swords in reverse, and the Ten of Swords in reverse, and then the Two of Swords in reverse. I'm sorry, the Two of Cups. This is just saying that there are people around you where it's not an equal exchange of emotional energy and you kind of need to block those people out. Like, again, like you may be overwhelmed when it comes to making decisions or having like vulnerable conversations because you have other people feeding advice to you. You have other people asking you a bunch of questions that are overwhelming and you don't need all that. What you need is to sit alone, to write it out, to plan by yourself and to, ha and to stop having other people come in, right? And that's how you're going to be able to go on your new journey. That's how you're going to be able to start anew. But what you need to do right now to get to this place where you're starting a new journey, where you're turning a new chapter, is like you need to give yourself some rest. Again, like block yourself off from these people and rest. Four of Swords is about rest, chilling out. And that's like chilling out and resting, but also just chilling out about like any negative self-talk or any doubts that you may have. And release you have the four of coins and the two of coins, right? So this could be in regards to like needing like monetary help or going through like monetary struggles for some of you. But I'm really getting that it's just like a call for you to let go of people that are around you that claim to be helping you that aren't really helpful. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting to let go of people who say that they're there to help you, but they aren't really helpful. They just make the situation worse. And then open yourself up to replacing those people. If this is a family member, maybe you can't replace them like, you know what I mean, like actually, but maybe theoretically. You know what I mean? If your family members are supposed to help you and they're not really helping you, maybe try finding a friend who's a little more planned and organized and positive to help you make the moves and have the conversations that you want to have. Yeah. Yeah, let me sit back because I like to be in a frame. Um, but yeah, thank you for those messages, Divine. Let's get let's get pile number two a oracle card before we send them on their way. Let's get pile number two a oracle card before we send them on their way. Before we send them on their way. Okay, what do we want pile number two to know? Okay. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is important. You have messenger at the bottom of the deck. This is serious energy bringing harmony and balance. I'm not sure if this is for you, but I just wanted to show it just in case like it meant anything for you. Like har the words harmony and balance are really jumping out at me, but you have double mission, light worker, star seed, serve the world by being you. Okay. Let me go read that for you. Okay. Lightworker star seeds are mission and purpose oriented. Many have the feeling that time is running out and there's something that they came here to do, create or to contribute. They're here to grow as souls individually. That's your individual mission. And also to contribute to the planet in some action oriented way. Remember? being action oriented, that's your collective mission. Their collective mission is often answered through a career calling or by devoting their life to something bigger. Until they remember their collective mission, it can feel as if something's missing or that they're forgetting something important. It's common for light worker star seeds to feel that they're different and they may carry soul memories of being visible or sharing their voice. As such, they may protect themselves by dimming their light in order to fit in or by spending time in some sort of closet, such as a spiritual closet. If you pull this card, you are being called to remember your collective mission and to step into it even more fully. You're being reminded that your role as a light worker is to light up the world with your presence. This doesn't have to be a great big thing or decision you need to make. You also don't need to have a great big plan. If you resonate with being a light worker, all you need to do is work out what lights you up, your passions and your joys. 
and keep doing that. When you trust and follow the simple path of the things that light you up and then lose yourself in the doing, you'll light up the world without even trying. And then your journaling or meditation question for this is how can you serve the world by being you? Alrighty, and that is your message pile number two. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you joining me today. Um, please like and comment if this resonated in the comment section, what really stuck out to you. Share this video if it like, you know, if it helped you out so that these messages can reach even more people. And subscribe to receive more messages like these. And until next time, this is XMO. Bye. Hello, pile number three, and welcome to your pick a card reading. <laughs> if you chose pile number three, you chose the adventuring pendulum. Um, and just a little bit about how this reading is going to work. Um, I'm going to go through these cards to let you know what these cards say. And then I'm also going to get you some additional advice or like clarification with the divine, um, the tarot of the divine tarot deck. And then after that, I'm also going to pull one more oracle card for you just to wrap a nice bow around everything and to send you on your way. Yeah, but without further ado, let's get into your cards. Okay. Okay. Hmm. This is interesting. So So a couple of things are coming through, right? This is very interesting. Um, so you may be, this is so funny. You may be somebody who's like very positive and hopeful, which people see, which they value. However, You may be like somebody who's like, has just a little bit of like toxic positivity. Just a little bit. Somebody who's like the glass is always half full. And not saying that like to be optimistic is a bad thing. Cause this kind of like, I'm kind of like a really optimistic person too, right? Uh, but they're saying kind of what this is saying is that you kind of leave, you kind of leave out some of the crucial details <laughs> when it comes to providing a complete and holistic view to the situation, right? Um, and it's not that people dislike you for this. It's just that it can be a little bit tiring. It's just a little bit tiring, right? You have the Queen of Swords in reverse. I call the Queen of Swords the Lady of Truth. She cuts to the truth of the matter. The fact that you have this card in reverse is just telling me that, like, again, you just be, you just might be leaving out some nuggets. You just might be leaving out some nuggets of information, which brings me to the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords is literally about leaving out information. This is about lying or um, um, omitting things from like a certain story or narrative. You know what I mean? For your own like personal gain, right? Then you have the Ace of Pentacles and the Star card. Again, these are telling me that you have probably one of the brightest perspectives of anybody in the room. And even your attitude and your energy can like lift the vibration in the room, right? This is good. This is this is great. This is a great part of your reading. But nine of wands, it's kind of tiring. Like, so, and this could be to you or other people. People could see that the way that, like, you're, I feel like weird saying overly positive, right? But just, like, your perspective can, like, tire them out. And this is, like, no fault to you, right? Or the fact that you're being positive all the time can also, can actually be wearing you out. The fact that you're not assessing the entire situation for its entire truth can be wearing you down, right? When sometimes we don't need to be positive all the time. Sometimes we need to just say shit sucks. Sometimes we need to say that, right? Sometimes you need to say that like, I hate this situation that I'm in. And to be in those funky feelings and those funky emotions so that you can move on, yeah? But when we're like acting like everything is good and cool all the time, you're not good, baby. Baby, are you good, baby? Baby, you're not. And that's okay. That's okay. It's okay to not be all right. It's okay to not like the situation that you're in. It's okay to, 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 to want something different. 
I like, it's funny because this is kind of like the opposite message of the last like <laughs> deck, um, the last pile. But yeah, so like just the thing is like, acknowledge my advice to you like just looking at the is to acknowledge the whole truth of the situation and if you need to be sad if you need to be in a funky mood if you need to have a bad attitude honor that because i think that being human is about experiencing the full range of emotions yeah it's about experiencing everything not just the nice and tidy things that people want us to like feel or that like you know even society pressures us into like trying to be at 100% of the time. But I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to get these, these, I'm going to pull some clarifiers for you. Is there anything else that we would like pile number three to know? Anything else we would like pile number three to be aware of, to be aware of in terms of how people see them? And just like any insight we want to provide people in pile number three. Okay, what else do we want pile number three to know? Okay, what else? What else would we like pile number three to know? What else would we like pile number three to know? Mm hmm. Yeah. What else would we like pile number three to know? Okay, not, I feel like part of me feels like they're spilling your tea. Um, what else would we like pile number three to know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get like maybe three more cards. What else do we want them to know? Okay, they gave you a, they gave you five more cards. Okay. Okay, okay, and this is like, this is just really resonating because this is kind of like a journey I have to go through, right? Um, so, so they're kind of saying that like, like the guys kind of want you to end this chapter, right? And they're saying that like, they know that, <laughs> It's funny. It's it's just funny. It's just funny because they're saying that they want you to stop doing this, right? And it's not necessarily to stop being positive, but it's to stop it's to stop denying the negative emotions that you could be having. Have the 10 of swords in reverse, which is about the end of a story, the end of a narrative, and then the 7 of cups, which is about like all the options that are available to you, and then the emperor in reverse. The emperor in reverse can be kind of nasty. He's kind of bossy. He's kind of mean and kind of unrelenting in terms of what he wants, right? The knight of coins, they're telling me that like, this isn't something that you have to do all the time, right? This is not something that you have to do all the time. But if you can just open your perspective to what you can gain in the long term or where you can grow with this, that's going to be helpful. Because again, then you have the King of Wands in reverse, which is again is telling me that you kind of have this fiery, you might have this fiery, explosive, like nasty energy inside of you that you may be afraid of. And you know that you need to use this energy, right? You not using this energy is kind of like blocking your blessings. It's kind of like blocking, it's kind of blocking you from evolving, but you need to just change your perspective around it. If you could change your perspective around it, right? Because the thing is like, this is all here and I don't even need to tell you the story. I'm just going to finish with the reading. I kind of want to talk about it, but I'm just going to finish the reading. If you can change your perspective about it, if you can have a little bit more like optimism about it that you know that like I can be mean, I can be intentional when I yell, I can be intentional when I'm upset, I can be intentional with sharing some of those like darker, you know what I mean, not so nice emotions, I can get more out of it. As you have the justice card, the justice card, what's really coming through, the justice card kind of pulls their emotions out of it, right? They're kind of saying, okay, like, because you, because I'm sensing that you think about that, like, when you do this, who feelings am I hurting? 
who feelings am I hurting? But the justice card says kind of take your feelings out of it and kind of be just like a logical. Two things, like being logical and just looking at the facts of the situation, but being balanced. I'm sensing that it's important for you to be balanced and balance is something that's going to be really important through your life journey. You have the moon card in reverse. The moon card in reverse is about acknowledging, again, the darker parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that we hide or are hidden, but also our primary, our, our let me slow down, but also our primal nature. Yeah, the things like, and that's the thing, we're all, we're all human beings. There is a primal part of us that needs to be expressed, that needs to be communicated, that needs an outlet, whether we want to acknowledge that or not. Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups. Um, this is interesting. The Queen of Cups, like the, the like intuition part is coming through for me. The Queen of Cups, she's very mothering. She's very nurturing. She takes care of herself and her others. But something about the intuition is coming through. And this may make more sense to you than it currently is to me. But like, there's something that you need to destroy. And your intuition has been telling you to destroy this thing. This, this, okay, this might be very specific for just like a couple of people. But your intuition has been telling you to switch up the way that you operate. And then like this imagery is just coming through really strongly right now. The Eight of Wands in reverse is about changing directions and changing what we're doing immediately and very quickly. There's this like Eight of Wands, there's this bird or this falcon with this carrying this torch, right? And then like, there's also, there's also these birds. There were birds that put things on fire. This is, I'm sorry, this is crazy because it's all coming to me at once. I was, this happened a week, like weeks ago where I was on TikTok and there's like birds when there's like wildfires, they pick up sticks that are on fire and then they actually like spread the fire around to destroy things, to destroy things. The tower card, you have the tower card. <laughs> you have the tower card. So like there's something that you need to destroy. You need to utilize some of those darker negative emotions for something that you need to destroy. And this could be a connection with a toxic person that could be yelling at you, that could be talking to you too much, that could just be like kind of badgering you. This is so interesting and this is so weird, but there's, I'm really getting that there's a, there's a connection that you need to destroy, a bridge that you need to burn. Again, going back to this moon card, there's a bridge here. You need to use you need to use some of those, like, I don't know if you need to lie. <laughs> I don't know if you need to be mean. I don't know if you need to be nasty. I don't know what it is, but there is something that you need to destroy, right? Last but not least, and which is kind of wrapping all this together, you have the high priestess. The high priestess in the traditional, in the traditional, it's represented by the number two polarity, but in the traditional um, Rider Waite Tarot, the high priestess, She's represented with two pillars. She stands in front of a black pillar and a white pillar. And again, that's because she understands the duality. She understands balance. She understands that you cannot have the dark without the light and you cannot have the light without the dark. You cannot have love without hate. You cannot have peace without violence. And it's not about choosing one over the other, but it's about being intentional about when you're using both of them. Right? When am I going to be, when am I, when am I, when am I going to choose to, to engage peacefully? Or when am I going to choose to engage with a destruction? Because the truth of the matter is nobody gets out of this planet alive without being violent. No shade. I mean, like, because it's either, because the thing is, you're either going to be violent to other people or you're going to be violent to yourself. And this is like, again, this is me. Take this with a grain of salt. I feel like our society has convinced us that like many of us are not violent people, but we live in violent structures that perpetuate violence against other people. Although we may not be doing the violence, violence may be done on our behalf, right? So would you rather have people doing violence on your behalf or would you be the person to ignite, to, in, to what is it, to incite the violence and be deliberate about where you're applying it to for your own benefit.
for your own benefit. I'm kind of going on a tangent now and I don't want to do that. I'm going to get you an Oracle card. But that's the thing. Just be just be mindful. Like if you need to be and like self-defense is the thing. If you need to think about it as self-defense, you know what I mean? Cutting off this connection or cutting off this 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 situation. This may be very specific, but it's coming through so strongly and so clearly. You have to understand that. Self-defense. I'm going to end this by saying self-defense and then I'm going to get your oracle card. I can kind of go through. They're, they're like really passionate with this one. I'm going to leave this here. Okay, can we get them an oracle card, please? Let's get them an oracle card. Okay, earthed. Learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. There's something about the serenity and the silence, right? Just sitting elsewhere, completely blocked off from everything. Earth. The challenge for all souls, the challenge, the challenge for all souls having a human experience is to be in the world, but not of it. To realize they are souls having a human experience and be fully conscious of it. To have their soul fully embody their body. People's personalities tend to relate to either transcendence or eminence. Those who lean towards transcendence have a longing for the heavens and the metaphysical. They yearn for a personal experience with God and to be lost in the heavens. They are envious of the angels and are more comfortable praying and hanging out in the stars than on earth. Those who tend toward eminence have attached themselves more to earth and their body. They spend more time thinking about things in the physical world rather than connecting with the heavens or their own mystical inner worlds. Being a fully embodied soul, having a human experience means finding the balance between transcendence and eminence. Being in the world, but not of it. Again, balance, duality, polarity is coming through. Most star seeds are drawn towards transcendence. Again, again, if you're a, the transcendent people, very soulful people, they might be attracted to, you know, the heavens, you know, feeling good, you know, love and light. All that good shit. I'm sorry. Let me <laughs> um, they're more comfortable. More star seeds are drawn towards transcendence. They're more comfortable with the angels in the heavens. Life on earth can be more difficult for them. If this is you, you are being reminded that you choose to be a soul in a body on earth. You are being called to focus, to focus more of your energies in the physical world. To learn how to be human. Mm-hmm a soul in a human body, fully present to what life on earth has to offer you. Again, this is just taking me back to those first couple of cards that you drew, right? That you need to have a balanced approach and you need to, you need to encompass and embody everything that's going around you and then deal with it accordingly. But love and light, all positive vibes, that's only going to take you so far before it wears you out and the people around you. Your journaling or meditation question is, do you tend to long for the stars or be more in the physical world? How can you find greater balance between the two? Yes, yes. Thank you. I really hope this helps. I know that one was a little wild. It was a little bit of a lot, but if this resonated, um, if there's anything that resonated or like stuck out to you, please let me know in the comments. Um, also like, like, comment, share this video with anybody else if you got value out of this so that these messages can reach more people. And don't forget to subscribe to, re to receive more messages like these. And until next time, this is XOMO. Bye. Hello, pal number four, and welcome to your pick a card reading. Um, just a little bit about how this reading is going to work. If you chose pal number four, chose this bracelet with, you know, the wood, the natural materials, this may be obsidian, but definitely there's definitely tiger's eye in here. Um, but yeah, a little bit how this reading is going to work. These cards are going to be how other people see you. I'm going to pull some more tarot cards from the Tarot of the Divine to get some insight or just some advice on how you should proceed in regards to how people are seeing you. And then I'm also going to get you an Oracle card to wrap a nice bow around everything. Yeah. But without ado, without further ado, let's, let's do this. Okay. 
this is clear as day. This is so funny how like some of these messages, a lot of these messages have just been centered around the truth. Um, and you are the truth speaker. You treat, you, you, you speak the truth. Um, you also might be somebody who like, who's like, cause the first person is like really good at giving advice, but that's like, that's kind of what this is, but you might have like resonated with pile number one as well, but this one is a little different. Pile number one, let me just talk about your pile, right? Um, if you were resonating with pile number one, go watch it, but you're definitely like a truth speaker. You may also be somebody with a really strong intuition. Also somebody who's able to provide like divinely guided advice, right? You have the Ace of Swords. This is this is communication as clear as day, right? This is really good conversations. The truth is the word the truth is really standing out to me. The King of Swords, somebody who also is cut, clear, dry, may remove their emotions out of the conversation just for the sake of like being blunt and getting you to the point and like, being clear, you know what I mean? Like no bullshit. You're not gonna you're not gonna beat around the edges. You're not gonna beat around the edges. Just I'm just and I don't have to say more because the communication is so clear here. You have the judgment card, which again is telling me that you might be telling people the truth of the situation that they may not be able to see themselves. You have the moon card here about things being hidden. Um, so again, this could be you like connecting to the divine, being divinely guided and giving people information that they cannot see themselves. Or like just you like giving people the perfect advice that they need to hear or also things that they're avoiding, right? Sometimes the judgment card, you might be a little bit judgy, but that's not what's really coming through right now. Um, but it's just you like coming through to like spit facts. You know what I mean? You're the friend that like, I don't even know if people are coming to you is the thing. I'm I'm not sensing that people are coming to you. <laughs> Again, this is kind of the difference between pal four and number one. I feel like people were coming to pal number one. I don't sense that people come to you. I sense that people might, I feel like when you speak, people have either a come to Jesus moment or they're like in awe of everything that you say, just with this judgment card being like dead center in the middle of this reading, right? You really like, ugh. You really do have like keen perception. You you look at everything that is going on that has gone on. You might have you might be like Aquarius or like a Gemini. I don't know why Scorpio is coming through. Um, but this is definitely like air sign energy because communication is here. Uh but yeah, it's just that like, and I'm stuck on this judgment card because it's so powerful in this reading about how you're able to communicate the truth. And the reason why I was saying that people may not come to you is because you have the five of swords at the end of the reading, which is saying that sometimes when you communicate these things, again, you take out all the, you take out all the emotions, you take out all the rift raff. People may have their feelings hurt once you're done talking at them. <laughs> Once you're done talking at them, people may leave with their like a wounded ego. You know what I mean? But it's only because you're telling the truth. It's only because you're telling the truth. The Five of Swords is about getting kind of, this is about using dicey words or getting in a conversation or argument where you're the person winning. I'm, it's clearly that you're winning. You're telling the truth. Like you may be brutal, brutally honest. You know what I mean? But if you look at these other people in the back, they're walking away because their feelings are hurt, girl. They're like, ow. That hurt. <laughs> but yeah, that's just what I'm getting from there. That's just what I'm getting from that. So yeah, you are you are the truth speaker. Also Sagittarius. Sagittarius energy. I, I, I kind of see Sagittarius as the truth speakers of the Zodiac. Um, but that's just what you do. Crystal clear perception. Is there anything else we want pal number four to know in regards to how people see them? or any insight or advice we'd like them to have from this specific reading. Mm -hmm. Child. Yeah, what is it? What is it? What else do we want pal number four to know? 
what is it that what else is it that we want pile number four to know what is it what else is it that we want pile number four to know what is it okay i don't think there was too many what else do we want pile number four to know okay That we want pile number four to know. Hmm. Oh. Number four. This is so interesting. This is so interesting. And it's interesting that this is taken like a left turn. I don't even know if this is a left turn. But I'm, so here's just what I'm, here's like, and this like, this kind of like, this correlates and coordinates with the cards, but it doesn't at the same time. Cause I'm getting just a lot of other stuff in the back. So, so I'm kind of sensing that like, the reason why you, why you cut to the truth, right? While you may not ease up, while you may be brutally honest, right, is maybe because of trauma regarding your family where you were dealing with somebody who was really tough on you and now you're just relaying that to other people. And it's kind of like alienating you and, you, and it kind of makes you sad, right? It kind of makes you sad that like, this is the way that you communicate and it hurts other people. And you're just like, well, this is just the truth of the matter. And this is the only way it needs to be. This low key isn't even the card. This is just me channeling right now. Um, but that's not the truth. The truth is that like you can you can soften up. You can be a little more emotional. You can you can be a little more communicative. You are somebody who is going to need help getting there. But again, it's it's about you communicating. And because you can communicate the truth, it's time to communicate that you may not be the best person when it comes to dealing with emotions. Be it because of your history, because of the way you grew up, or whatever it may be, but just communicate that. Because the sooner that you start working on this on being a little more tender, um, the, the sooner the sooner you're gonna see um, a lot of the things in your life that you wanna see come to fruition. I'm gonna walk you through the cards now. Um, you have the strength card. The strength card is usually about like confidence, but this image of like strong handling is coming through. The 10 of cups is about emotional abundance and happiness, but family is coming through. The image of the family dynamic is coming through for this, right? Then you have the six of cups in reverse, which is about bad memories, um, memories and emotions from our childhood or our past plaguing us. And then you have the six of cups and the six of wands. I have the six of wands in reverse, right? Which is also saying that maybe, and I'm not even getting, because this is like, because sometimes when we see the six of wands in reverse, these are people like talking bad about us, like bad mouthing us. But that's not necessarily what I'm getting, right? I'm not, this, that could be it. But I'm getting more not receiving credit where credit was due. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting in the past, like, you did something really good and you you maybe didn't even get a thank you. You didn't get a good job. Maybe you got a pat on the back. Maybe you got a happy meal. But that was kind of the extent. But when you did something bad, they let you know that you fucked up. Right? For you to move on from this, from you to move on... You need to, uh, again, apply some of those. This is the Knight of Swords. This is more Swords energy, more communication, more truth of the matter. This is also like research. This is also like research um, 
and like asking questions with somebody, with somebody. This is like, this could be like reshaping your frame of mind because you have the Eight of Cups, which is about being hopeful and going back out into the world, looking for something that makes you feel better, looking for something that's better than the current, like emotional bearing that you have. Right after that, you have the Nine of Cups, which is about being optimistic. And then this like relationship is coming through. This con connection in the relationship in this card is really coming through to me. So this could be like you hoping that you can have a better relationship than the ones that you witnessed. But again, you kind of got to get emotional. You got to be emotional. You got to agree that you are going to be an emotional person, right? Because you have the Five of Cups, which is about grieving, which is about loss, which is about dealing with hard emotions back to the Six of Cups in reverse, possibly hard emotions from our past, bad memories, you know what I mean, that we need to grieve, but that grieving helps us evolve. It helps us transform. It helps us become a greater version of ourselves, but that is coming through so strongly right now. That's coming through so strongly right now, right? Seven of Cups in reverse, I'm getting that, like, don't distract yourself. If you're somebody who distracts yourself with alcohol, with whatever it may be, with a bad coping mechanism, with like scrolling through your social media feed, with like eating, addictive shopping, whatever it is, it's important for you not, not to distract yourself, but to develop a, a spiritual practice, to develop, be it yoga, meditation, you know what I mean? Get, buying yourself a deck of tarot cards, consulting a high priestess, somebody who can give you advice, getting help, getting help because you're past the time where you need help. This isn't something that you're going to be able to do alone, but putting it into this story. And I don't even know if this is just the story of telling the truth, right? This could be like telling the truth, but the story of being a harsh communicator. Cuz you're cuz you're not, you're not getting you're not getting as much out of it as you as you think or that you claim that you are. You could get a lot more out of life. You know, I kind of want to give you a hug. I wish I wish you were here so that I could give you a hug. Um, thank you. Can we can we please get pile number four and Oracle card, please? What we what we like what would we like pile number four to know before we head out? Any like final messages for pal number four? Any any final messages for pal number four? Yeah, I say <laughs> I say you may be hard headed. You may be hard headed at the bottom of the deck. You have I'm going to read this one because I don't think I've ever read this one. You have Jump In, Andromedan Energy, Adventure, Say Yes to Change, Say Yes to Change, Say Yes to Change. But the one that actually fell out for you was like, you got the love. Hydradian Energy, Codependency, Boundaries. I'm going to read this one for you. You got the love and jump in. Okay. And jump in is on 82, but you got the love is on 128. Okay, you got the love. The Hadarians? The Hadarians are believed to be beacons of pure, divine, unconditional love who see love in all people and situations. As a result, they can find it hard to have boundaried, interdependent, healthy relationships because they only see the unconditional nature of those they meet. The lovers of the cosmos, they dive in fast. 
They're here to learn how to love while in a separate body, to learn to love self first, and then to establish healthy relationships with others, to remember that the love they seek is already within them, that they truly do have all the love all on their own. The message of this card is to review the ways you may have the message of this card is to review the ways you may need to establish healthier boundaries. Perhaps you are in a codependent relationship in which you may be losing your sense of self. It's common for star seeds to dive deep into relationships, particularly with those who feel safe and familiar at a soul level. Perhaps you're in a relationship in which you give more than you receive. Or perhaps there's a certain vitality to it and you're always unsure where you stand. This card is assigned to do a relationship review and to see what energetic agreements you've made, consciously or unconsciously, to acknowledge if there are relationships in which you feel anxious or powerless, in which you don't feel, feel in which you don't feel like it's safe to relax and just be you, to assess if there are any places of inadequacy that you've used a relationship to soothe or to cover up. And then the journaling or meditation question for this one is, do you lose yourself in relationships? If so, how? How can you develop a deeper love for yourself? And then running right back on over to jump in. This is on 82. Andromeda is a spiral galaxy, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way. It's believed that Andromedan star seeds are a group of beings who love their freedom. Very adaptable, they have a strong willingness and adaptability to change and go with the flow, to find calm in the chaos, to swim with the tides. This card is here to encourage you to do the same. Perhaps you have a significant goal or opportunity ahead of you. If so, you're being guided to jump in. Don't wait for permission. Don't stall until you feel ready. Take a deep breath, a good old run up and jump right on in. Life bends for the courageous and courageous is what you're being called to be. You're already facing the right direction. The only thing left to do is leap. You'll figure out the details as you go along. Things may not always be smooth sailing Life on Earth rarely is. However, it's the rougher seas that teach us how to sail with glory. And once you know that, you can navigate any sea, ocean, or storm. Andromedans want you to fall in love with surfing the waves of life, to seek more adventures, to embrace your own adaptability, and to find a way to be calm in the chaos. You didn't come to Earth to be passive. You came to Earth to truly live. Now, now Take a good run up and leap. And then a meditation or journaling question for this one is, how can you be more adventurous? How are you being called to jump right on in and leap? Alrighty, and that is your reading. Thank you, pal number two, for tuning in to this pick a card reading on how people see you. Um, yes, if this resonated, if there was anything that jumped out to you, Please leave me a comment letting me know and don't forget to like this video and share it with other people if you found value out of it so that these messages can reach as many people as possible. Last but not least, um, subscribe so that you can get a notification whenever I make more videos like these. And until next time, this is XOMO.